Hey YouTube and hello Facebook. How's it going? It is going to be a Let's Talk Tuesday. Weird, I know. But however, it is mostly because Bethany had to fly. Let me fix you here for a second. Facebook, okay, there we go. But anyway, it's mostly because Bethany had to do a two-day trip the other day. So, she's coming to you tonight so that we can do our little live session. Let me pull y'all closer. Hey Heather! <laughs> so, Anyway, so tonight we're going to talk about TS and hearing and ear issues that TS women have. Um, most of this is going to be talking about things like sensory neural hearing loss. You know, if you've got conductive sensory neural hearing loss, um, progressive. Um, sometimes you don't even have to have sensory neural hearing loss. There's other types of hearing loss. Um, and um, how sometimes, sometimes those can uh, I'm not going to say they in, are make NVLDs possible, but you know, if you have a hearing issue, like I have sensory neural hearing loss, and I'm aphasic, which aphasic it, or aphasia, shall I say, aphasia is a verbal learning disorder instead of a nonverbal learning disorder. Um, because the way that I hear things mostly, it it's kicking in right now. <laughs> anyway, basically, I communicate better writtenly than I do verbally, which is kind of weird because I do all these videos and I speak a lot. However, um, you know, if I start to stutter or if I get nervous, things like that, that's when my aphasia kicks in. Um, and I know that y'all probably noticed over the years how it's gotten better. Uh, yes, I know. I'm, I'm doing Starbucks. I'm guilty, okay? I need it. <laughs> but anyway... So yeah, so sensory neural hearing loss. So if you have sensory neural hearing loss, one of the conditions that women with TS can face when it comes to hearing issues, um, basic, basically it's like a nerve, you've got nerves in your ears, like in your inner ear and stuff like that. Um, and so that can be either progressive or conductive. Now, obviously, you can tell progressive means that it will progress, it will continue, it can get worse. Um, conductive is when, let's say, okay, so I actually have to get tested uh, this year to find out if, I'm, if I have conductive or progressive uh, sensory neural hearing loss. So, if you have uh, conductive, then that means that you've lost, you know, a certain amount. Let's say you've lost 30%, um, which I've lost 30% of my hearing. Um, so let's say that you've lost 30%. Sharita, I used to get bad ear infections. Yes, and that's another thing that we're going to be talking about is the ear infections. Um, I had such bad hearing uh, ear infections. Sorry. Uh, I had such bad ear infections when I was growing up that uh, I, my ears were actually ruptured not once, twice, both of them. Um, this one time they ruptured and uh, I can't remember how old I was. I was probably about, my mom said I was probably around a year because I was still a baby in the crib. Um, what happened was is I guess I didn't uh, have a lot of pain with it because, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. sorry, ah! <laughs> getting all these. Okay, I know that I have some type of hearing loss. So then, you know, what you can do if, uh, you can talk to your doctor, um, mostly you would go to, um, either your GP or, um, you go to an ENT. Hey, Molly! Hi, 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 girl, hi. Hi, 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 um, what's happening? Um, but yeah, you can go to your GP or you can go to your ENT and they will recommend a, uh, uh, audiologist for you. Um. Molly, yeah, I got hearing aids. Yeah, you know, um, I'm supposed to have hearing aids, or at least I got fitted for hearing aids, and I was going to get some. Um, I probably do need them. Uh, Abby, hey, I got like five sets of tubes. You see, I never got tubes put in for my for my ear infections. Um, I mean, that is something that a lot of girls do, and that is pretty common. Um, and guys, if y'all are on YouTube, y'all need to... Y'all need to catch Molly over here. Her YouTube uh, name is Short Cakey. 
uh, she does some fun things with like video games and stuff like that. And she's one of our, us TS sisters. So let's go over there and show her some love, right? Let's show some love to the TS sisters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's really funny to watch. I love her to death. Um, hey, I got like five sets of tubes, Abby. Okay. And, um, conductive means sounds has, have trouble getting there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sharita, did you ever... Um, oh, did you ever have, uh, tubes in them? Never did. Yeah, I, I never did either. <laughs> Love you too, Molly. So, um, Charity, hey girl, hi, 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 hi. Um, I've worn hearing aids since I was five years old. Yeah, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just putting my fingers in front of the camera for you guys. Um, let's see. Okay, Danielle, I'm supposed to have hearing aids, but I have... Kind of gave up on that. Mm. I'm not going to say I have it. Um, Charity, I had tubes put in twice and also had two time, time pen. Not sure I can say that word. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you think after this time, like after all this time, I would. Um, okay, yeah, that was the last one. So anyway, but yeah, if you have a lot of hear, uh, ear infections, um, tubes are a possibility to have, or, you know, to do. Um, and of course, that would be a discussion between you and, like, your ENT, your doctors. Um, Abby, what coffee, uh, hold on, so, yeah. What coffee are you drinking? Um, I'm having a caramel, iced caramel macchiato. Uh, Amy, don't give up. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it does make a difference, because when, uh, I found out when I was living in Japan, that's when I got tested originally, um, and then I found out that I had sensory neural hearing loss, um, but, yeah, hearing aids, it, it's just like wearing glasses, like, if you need glasses, um, that's why I'm having to get up to the screen, so I could probably put my glasses on, and I could read a lot better. Okay, uh, Danielle, mainly because the last time I went to my ENT, she said I needed to be put back under to take my to oh to take one of my tubes out. Uh, I'm still oh I was still having seizures uh, too. Oh wow. Yeah, that's something definitely not good. You definitely don't want seizures. <laughs> not the tubes cause those but I mean I understand her hesitation and wanting to do that surgery to get them out um charity yes hearing gaze are a godsend I would not be able to function without them yeah I mean mm, excuse me yeah if your hearing loss you know progresses to that point you know hearing aids aren't that bad of a thing and there are so many different types of hearing aids now um and there's like I'm not going to call them the invisible ones, but, you know, they have, like, clear tubing and stuff like that where, you know, you, you really can't tell. They're, quote, invisible, but they're not really invisible, right? Um, so, that, that's one option you can do um, for hearing. Uh, but, usually, uh, I know that there's cochlear implants, but that's usually if you're completely deaf. Excuse me. They're usually not going to talk about that until unless you are. Um, Danielle, I have kind of learned to adapt since I got out of school. Yeah, um, you know, when you're in school, definitely. Uh, I know sometimes it was, I think I had, I've had two sets of tubes, Molly. Yeah, um, well, I mean, like I said, I didn't have any, uh, tubes put into my ears. Um, but anyway, but yeah, so feel free, everybody, um, on Facebook, now that we can do this, uh, feel free if you want to talk a little bit about your experience with maybe, uh, TS and hearing loss, TS and, um, maybe ear issues, because not only are we talking about, like, types of hearing loss or, you know, like sensory neural hearing loss or, uh, tubes, I mean, yeah, there's the ear infections, which tubes can help, um, Amy... Sorry. Technology has come a long way and continues to advance. Exactly. Um, who, who knows what the future holds? I mean, there's so many different things that can come out. And, you know, one year they've got one thing. And then, you know, 
another year down the road, they find out something else, you know? Danielle, I know in my case they want to do something with the bones. Oh, okay, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah. Uh, excuse me. But anyway, but yeah, so um, there's ear infections, which tubes can correct. Um, but also, I mean, we all know about our nice little prominent ears. It's one of our things with TS. Um, I know there's a lot of girls who like to, or look at having surgery, like to have um, their ears pinned back, the ear pinning surgery. Let's see. I try to read your comments as soon as I see them. Uh, Charity, my audiologist recommended getting new hearing aids every five years, especially to keep up with the latest technology. Exactly. You know, every few years. Um, Amy, I've had nine ear surgeries and hearing aids since I was five. So hit me up, right? Amy, uh, Abby, I remember having to be at the doctor's all day as a kid for like a whole weekend. Hearing, uh, hearing test, blood test, glucose test, vision, all in one. Weekend when I was little, I was miserable. I would be miserable as well. I'm just saying. I would be definitely. Mm, 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 mm. No, ma'am, Sam. No, ma'am. Yeah. No, thank you. I'll pass. <laughs> um. So. Hey, Michelle. Okay. But anyway, but yeah. So some of the girls have had ear pinning. The ear pinning surgery but that's more of like a plastic surgery um uh, uh, molly yep no no yeah exactly nope no 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 no, no. I'll, I'll use that gift that no 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 where the guy's like sitting there pulling out the no sign the whole time <laughs> yeah i'll do i'll definitely take that one michelle hey 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 hi hi but yeah so that's only some of the issues that we're talking about when it comes to ts and either hearing loss and ear issues so and Amy, if you were wanting to talk a little bit about your surgeries and your experience with hearing loss, um, just uh, say something in the comments again, so that way I can uh, I'll, I can bring you on. Uh, Danielle, I believe I have only had two sets of two sets of tubes, I believe. Yeah, there's a um, in most cases, I know a lot of girls who have had tubes have had to have more tubes put in because tubes are really prone to come out um, just from just from use uh, you know sleeping whether you possibly maybe knock your head um, I know that they're really prone to come out so it can be one of those mm, things but we are going to try to bring Miss Amy on so that way she can talk for a little while not only that but Amy I love my Amy what can I say Hello. Hello, my beautiful, gorgeous sister. How are you? Good. Good. Oh, hold on. Let me just read these two comments. Uh, Michelle, I'm not sure, but I think uh, I think I had tubes when I was little. Also, wear hearing aids daily. Danielle, I have only uh, one in my left ear that just won't come out. And then Danielle says, "Hi, Amy." <laughs> so. Hello. So, tell us a little bit about um, the ear surgeries you have had in the past. Well, I would say that ear issues have probably been my biggest obstacle in with having TS. Um, when I was born, my ears were just about swollen shut. Um, oh, wow. And they didn't think I had any eustachian tubes. Um so <clears throat> I had tubes in my ears starting at one and I've had various other surgeries, including, uh, repairing the, you know, hole in the eardrum, temp uh, which is tympanoplasty. I've had cholesteatoma clis removed. Um, I've had a uh, mastoidectomy. Um, I've, Several of my ear surgeries, my ear doctor also, um, while I was 
having those surgeries, they actually fixed my neck, which was even wider than it was. I had a web neck. And so they corrected that while I was under for the surgery. Um, and I have had the ear pinning at least on one side. Um, so like I said, I've had them, a number of them were when I was younger before I started school. And then I had one in eighth grade and then one in college. And then in 2010, I had one, um, to get a bone anchored hearing aid, it's called a Baja. Okay. Um, on my right side, uh, let's see if I can pull my hair back. You can kind of see. Oh, I kind of yeah, I see that. Yeah. So that's a little different from a cochlear, um, and it is for people who have primarily conductive loss. Um, I have a mixed loss, um, so I have some sensory neural, some conductive. Um, the conductive the way the Baja works is it's bypassing some of a lot of my problem with scar tissue from surgeries and um, that the anatomy of my ear basically inside. So it's allowing me to hear myself or hear everybody else how you how you hear yourself, which is kind of through the bones in your head. Right. So that's why they call it a bone anchored hearing aid. Yeah, um, okay. And even this one is my second generation. And it is more advanced than the first one. When I first got them, you know, they weren't programmable. They were analog. Um, you know, the technology was nowhere near what it is now. Um, but my second one, I now have Bluetooth in it. So I can talk on the phone a lot easier. Um, it's just a lot more capabilities. And, you know, you just never know what kind of technology they're going to come up with to help. Right. Um, I have a speaker I use at work that's connected to it. Um, and so, yes, I'm one of those that can't function very well without my hearing yeah. aids. Yeah. Um, the, that's how severe my loss is. Um, but luckily there's been, um, you know, advances in the hearing aid technology and surgeries that have helped me. Um, and I'm fortunate to have good insurance to help cover those too so right right uh, sorry my phone's just going off um so okay we have actually have a couple of questions for you amy um so um karen says hi first um and then abby tim wants to know uh she said she asked if they removed your mastoid um and then molly would like to know um how they corrected your web neck how they corrected it mm-hmm yeah, so on the mastoid, um, <clears throat> my issues were mainly on the right side, and he basically knocked out, he did some reconstructive work, um, so my, the opening of my ear is quite a bit larger on that side, mm -hmm. and that's why I got the Baja on that side first, because it's harder to fit hearing aid right, with the right. work that I've had done, um, and I also have... Because of the anatomy of my ears, they don't drain properly. properly. I have to wear earplugs in the shower and swimming because um, I. It's not good to get water in them because um, right, right. the water doesn't come out correctly. Um, as far as the um, fixing my neck, um, back in when I was younger. Um, the standard procedure was to do like a zigzag down the side of your neck. Oh, okay. But my, my ear doctor, luckily, um, when he did the corrective surgery, he, uh, went in the, I have a scar in the back. Um, oh, okay. I've had it, I've had it fixed a couple of times. The scars has spread a little bit. Um, but overall it's a lot better than it was. And I had um, le not very good mobility in my neck before getting the surgery. So Got that it. was how my mom um, argued with the insurance <laughs> as far as uh, quality of life type thing, um, because it was like kind of considered plastic surgery then, um, mm -hmm. you know, elective. So yes, I had that done, like I said, when I was under for my ear surgeries. Um, and like I said, it's spread a little bit, but 
overall a lot better than it was. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well that, yeah, I, well, I haven't had any surgery, like any surgeries yet. Um, one of the things I guess I'm concerned about when it comes to surgery, um, I know a lot of us TS girls deal with keloid scarring, which I've got a little bit of, of that, but not much. Um, so, but I know it's just something uh, that we deal with, but that, that was actually, so he just did the back of your neck. Okay, oh, sorry, we got a couple of more comments. Uh, Karen says um, she also uh, got hearing aids last year, loves it. Um, and Michelle says, I don't know how poorly I was actually functioning until I got mine. So, and then Danielle says, mine is pretty bad, but I have not had a choice but to put it on the back burner. So, hey Shelby. <laughs> so I, I wore a hearing aid in one ear for quite some time, even though I needed them in two. And when I got them in both ears, you don't realize how much you're missing until you get hearing aids or you get in better hearing aids. Um, it can really make a lot of difference. And then I feel like you're, you know, your brain actually kind of reprograms to where you're used to hearing from both sides. Right. Um, my grand my grandpa wore them and when he got new ones what um at one point from the VA they he, my grandma couldn't believe he thought she was being loud because <laughs> she had, had to speak up for so long around him right um you know there was just so much of a jump in the technology there so like I said I had to position myself I prefer round tables at meals where I can see everybody. I still try to kind of position myself in a room, like in meetings, where I can see the most people. Right, um, right. For that reason, to kind of fill in if I'm not catching everything. Yeah. Um, I, I know for me, um, so the way my hearing is, is like sometimes if I'm right beside somebody, I'm okay. Um, my issues seem to be like when someone's like in the other room or something like that, because like, even my ex-husband, um, I remember this one time he got, and this was really what made me go to the doctor. He got really annoyed one day. Like I was just sitting there cooking and I had a bunch of stuff going on. Like I had music and other stuff going on, but, um, so I'm sitting there cooking and all of a sudden he came into the kitchen and he said, Bethany. And I was like, yes, can I help you? <laughs> and he was like. It's like the fourth time I've called your name. I've been trying to say something to you for, you know, what, however long it was. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> but he, that was, that was probably the fifth, or, like, he had done it more than a couple of times. And I know growing up, my mom complained about it too. Like, she'd be in the other room calling for me and I wouldn't hear what she said. So, mine seems to be more, like, long distance than it does, like, when someone's right beside me. So. It also depends, it also depends on the. Um the pitches that your loss is in. Right. Um, I usually had a harder time. I have a harder time hearing um, guys in, with low voices. Yeah. Partially because they also have a tendency to mumble. But um, then higher pitches, sometimes I'll pick up a fan whirring or an alarm, and I'll be like, what is that? Right. And I may not be able to tell where it's coming from, but I'm hearing it because of the frequency that it is. I'm... Yeah. I'm, my loss may not be as bad at that frequency. Right, right. Like, yeah, because I think for conductive, like, it's like certain pitches. Like, conductive can affect cert just certain pitches, right? If I'm trying, if I'm yes. remembering this correctly. Like, you can hear, yes. like, some really high, sometimes really low. But anyway, yeah, I know it's like jumping up in there. Um, Danielle says. I also start, I also start talking. My speech is affected when I don't have them in. That at, I'm to the point that when they're out, I can hear myself talking differently. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can agree with that because I know that, uh, I mean, not that I have hearing aids, but, you know, sometimes if, I, if, I'm, if it's a whisper or something like that, I know sometimes it can affect the way I talk as well, what I'm hearing. So... Um, yes, yeah, so Danielle says uh, her, lip sync, uh, her lip reading skills are on point as well. Uh, Charity Watson, lip, lip reading saves me, even with my hearing aids. 
Uh, Danielle, reading lips is a saving grace. Shelby says, Holly just had her hearing tested and they were shocked that her deficit wasn't more severe. No hearing aids at this time, but have to have her tubes taken out and replaced because they said they had to force them in when they put them in before. Scar tissue build buildup is bad though, so he said he was going to try to clear it out. Um, and Shel uh, Shelby also says Holly's is more distant too. Um, Karen says for me, it was the tinnitus. Ooh, I hate tinnitus. Ugh. I notice it more when I'm in a place with a lot of background noise. Um, I think I've heard that as your if your hearing loss gets worse, your tinnitus also can get worse. Um, as your hearing decreases, yeah. I don't know. That may be the nerves trying to fill things in. I'm not sure how that works, but right. that's what I've heard. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes sense because, I mean, tinnitus, yeah, if you're, if, I just, I, I haven't had tinnitus, but I know someone who does have tinnitus, um, and theirs is because they, and it's one thing that I'm kind of concerned about with working on an airplane, but at the same time, I work on commercial aircraft, so, um, you know, commercial aircrafts aren't as loud as, like, military aircrafts. Um, so, nope. you, yeah, so I, I'm not too concerned. Do your ears pop when you fly? Because mine don't. Very rarely. Mine pop. Mine pop. <laughs> Actually not. They never, they never have. Even when I was flying up to NIH when I was three, they never did. Really? Really. I'll be. Very rarely. I can count on probably one hand all the flights I've had where they've cleared. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, I, I've only had... I had an incident like a couple of weeks ago when my ears wouldn't pop, but it was because I made the mistake of flying while I had a cold and I was congested and never do that, people. Just don't. <laughs> if you have a cold, don't fly. Um, so anyway, Cassidy says, hi, Bethany. My oh, yeah. Um, my dad is doing okay right now. Thanks for your concern. As far as TS and hearing, I love listening to music, but I listen to it all the way up with headphones or earbuds in my ears because I want to have the full effect of a song, but I'm afraid I'll go completely deaf. My mom gets on to me all the time for this reason. What are your thoughts on that, ladies? I already have some hearing loss. I know I should turn the volume down, but the music doesn't have the full sound when it, uh, full sound when it, turn when it's turned down low what's your advice bethany and amy have any of you ladies had issues with this um and michelle says tinnitus um yeah ringing yeah it's ringing in the ears um danielle mine too charity my ears don't typically pop either um but yeah so let's get to uh cassidy and music and headphones um i mean Textbook answer. <laughs> textbook answer. That's what I like to call it. Um, textbook answer. Don't you do it. Yeah, don't do it. Um, but Bethany is going to be the first to admit that, yeah, she will have her music up full volume with the headphones in, like all that. Like, I understand it. Um, but also, you know, um, your mother is right. And, you know, the thing is, is like if you listen to it on full volume with the headphones in your ears, um, it can make it worse. Ish. I mean, not that it's going to immediately make a difference or anything like that. But it, it's one of those things that if you talk to any audiologist, ENT, they're going to tell you don't do it. Um, yeah. It would be just like, um, like people that are around loud machinery. My dad was a farmer. He had hearing loss. I mean... If you're constantly around those loud noises, it's going to affect the, the nerves. Yes. Yeah. I can't even wear earbuds because of the weirdness of my ears. I have to yeah. wear the other kind of headphones. Gotcha. Oh, like the, um, what are those? Uh, the regular. Yeah, like the boss. Kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, well, I used to have a pair of those. Um, and now I have, um. 
I have like those earbuds that come with the iPhones, iPad, iPods, you know. Um, I've got those earbuds. And I have another pair of earbuds. Um, and I know some people even use like those wireless ones. I, I me, my, myself personally, I'd be so afraid to lose those things because they're so little. Like, I, I just, that's just me personally. <laughs> um, Karen, the most common age group losing hearing is young people with in-ear headphone volumes. So there you go. You get it from a doctor herself, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, no, it, yeah, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed. And like I said, I'm, I'll, I'll tell on myself, I'll tell true shame the devil, as they say, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, yeah, I, I listen to the music with my head, you know, my earbuds, full volume, all that, because, I love my Janis Joplin, I love my Ke uh, Haley Kiyoko, um, I love, you know, I just love all my music, I just love music in general, if you don't like music, something's wrong with you, that's, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> so, um, oh, so Samantha has another, um, she said, hey girls, just had my hearing tested last month, and it looks like I have bilateral men mode hearing loss, and she's 34. Any re recommendations for safe headphones? Um, I think like what uh, Amy was saying earlier, I think the safer, at least, uh, headphones would be like the the Boss ones. Um, they kind of, it's those big ones that kind of really just cover your ears, like the old, old, old school, as we say, uh, old school headphones. Those are probably the safest, I think, as far as like headphones are concerned, if you're going to use headphones. Um, I mean, I like being a DJ and having my speaker going, but that's just me. <laughs> what about you, Amy? Well, I mean, like I said, I can't wear the, um, the earbuds, but I would right. think if you're going to have those up next to your ear, probably the kind that are external right, right. are going to be a little bit better. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm not an audiologist, but yeah. Yeah, no, just, yeah. That would be my thought. Yeah, like, yeah, like I was saying, like the boss, the old school ones. Um, Molly says she needs to get her so, some of those. Uh, Karen says over ear. Yeah, exactly. The boss, the big ones, old school, uh, over ear, but it's really the volume. Exactly. Like, I mean, even if you're doing the over ear, like the big ones, um, we're mostly talking about the volume. Um, <laughs> Molly says DJ it up <laughs> with the speaker um, but yeah it it's one of those things that it's mostly about the, the volume like loud noises things like that um, that's why you know men who work in construction or in a shipyard or like Amy's father was a farmer you know if they're around loud noises usually they'll give them like protective ear you know headwear um, to protect their ears um, and the noises and we do oh. And we do it in the airline industry as well for the ramp agents. And there, okay, got caught on a string of my clothing. Um, Charity says, "Old, okay, old school headphones are better. You have to be careful with volume. Since I wear hearing aids, I use earbuds. Oh, I can't use earbuds. Um, Sarah Lawson says, I wear hearing aids that have Bluetooth. And I, th I think, Amy, you said that yours, yours do as well. Yeah, um, my, my one side does. Yeah, and I can control it, uh, control it on my phone. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think there's been some great suggestions tonight as far as that's concerned. And, yeah, I mean, and honestly, Amy, I had not, until you, uh, you told me about yours, I had never even heard of that kind of hearing aid. Like, my, my audiologist yeah. never, didn't even tell me about that. When I first got it back in 2010, it had it was just getting approved and getting its own like insurance code. Got it. Got so it. you have to get. Um, I had to have a surgery and then let it heal into the bone for several months before I could get the actual device. Okay. Um, now they have a. It does the same function as far as bypassing some of your scarring and and anatomy on the on the, uh, the bone anchor but it's magnetic instead okay. um i have a titanium bolt 
back there. Um, so there's no, this, your, your incision is covered and the, the device just, um, you know, basically snapped, attaches to your, the side of your head. I have to get all my hair out of the way. So it's a little bit more of a hassle, but, um, I think the, the big message is take care of your ears. Right. Um, you get one set. Take ladies. care of your hearing, because <laughs> you could be making things worse by not getting tested and getting your hearing aids if you need them. Right. Exactly. And hi, Faith. How are you doing? Um, but yeah, no, it, exactly. It's like you—you you only get one body. You get two ears. You get two feet. You get two hands. I mean, ten fingers, ten toes. Yeah. So you—you've got to take care. You got to take care of it. Um, you got to take care of your hearing because once, you know, if you don't take care of it, you're going to lose it. And then once you lose it, it's gone. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's hearing aids and things like that that can help you. But, you know, it, if you can and when you can, you should work to protect it. Like what you're saying. Like, you know, you got to take care of it. Take care of your ears. But, yeah. So, um... Oh, okay, sorry, I thought we got another comment. Hey, Heather. Okay, Michelle says, look and see if you have a vocational rehab program. Got my hearing aids um, that have Bluetooth capability. And I, oh, that's a different, okay. Sorry, it keeps popping up a few. Um, got my hearing aids through them for free. So, yeah, look at that. Um, I know if you're on um, Medicaid, um, I think there's some programs either you can get uh, hearing aids for free or like for a very, very low rate. Um, Heather Ann Gooch says, I wear one on the right. It improves quality of life uh, hugely. <laughs> hugely. <laughs> um, Samantha Lemmer. Hi, how are you? Uh, cool. The whole Bluetooth, ca Bluetooth capability makes me less sad that I'll likely need hearing aids eventually. Um, uh, oh yeah, no, um, yeah, like Amy was saying, like, technology advances, like, you know, what we have one year can't, ne you know, next year, it's gonna be something else, you know, um, it's kind of like computers, you know, one year they have this computer that does, has this hard drive or whatever, then the next year they come out with something bigger and better, like, you just never know, and that's with hearing aids, that's with medicine, and, uh, surgeries, technology. I'm sorry, I thought you were about to say something, Amy. Hi, Samantha. Um, <laughs> so, I the other thing I was going to say is um, there's also a lot more, I think, um, awareness and understanding in, like, the workplace and, like, at school. Right. Back when I was in school, it was, well, look, we got to put her, you know, let's put her up front so she can hear and... You know, so I think nowadays, um, with disability laws and different things, there's a lot more accommodation and, you know, companies um, will work with you if you, you know, you do have something like that, like I do. Um, you know, it's, there's more understanding than there used to be. Right, um, right. I even read an article about them changing interview, some companies changing interview um, methods for, um, people who have autism, you know, so that's good. The, the, the environment's changing and, you know, people are being more open when you've got a disability. Right. And I think that, I think that that's good because like, um, I know you and I are around the same age and yeah, I mean, when I was younger, like I, I remember that there was really a stigma about it. Um, you know, it's not that people were embarrassed, but it was like, oh, you know, like more of a, maybe, a, I'm trying to think of the, the right word, but like kind of, well, like, especially about like my TS, like hush hush or like, yeah, if you have a, um, a hearing disability, let's bring her up front so that way she can hear. Um, okay. She's short. So let's put things down here for her. Um, I'm trying to think of the right word for that. Um, they didn't. They didn't really know what to do with me. Right. Um, and I, you know, I found out after the fact 
that like in college I could have gotten all this accommodation like with note takers right and registering for classes early by the point I found out I didn't need it because there was only one session of my classes but right. um you know it's becoming more and more you know mainstream and more like people have they, they take sensitivity training we have right. we have a group at my work uh you know diversity groups and one of them is for ability awareness right, right. so you know there's just all kinds of things that you didn't see even 15 years ago i don't think right right no yeah i mean and, and that's true um samantha says um a friend of mine applied for and received a leaving butterfly ministry scholarship for her hearing hearing aids um Danielle says, um, when I was in school, it was hell. Can we preach to the choir? <laughs> um, heaven, oh, I love your name, Heaven. Um, heaven Michelle Clausen says, thank you ladies for bringing this uh, attention. It really is appreciated. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Crystal Rosario says, hi ladies. Hi. Um, Danielle says, uh, we need to talk, Amy. So that's Danielle Brandon. I don't know if y'all are friends on Facebook, but... Uh, she says that y'all need to talk. <laughs> she wants to hit you up. Okay. So, yeah, just, um, Danielle, if you're, Amy's obviously tagged in this video now. So, um, if you're not friends with her on Facebook, I'm sure you can send her a friend request or, you know, mess message her if you, uh, would like to talk to her. But, uh, but anyway, so Amy, is there any advice you would give? Because, um, I know Shelby's a TS mom. And I know a couple of uh, TS parents are going to watch this, and obviously other TS women as well. Um, do you have any advice when it comes to dealing with with hearing issues? Like um, maybe something parents can say to their daughter, or maybe just something you could say personally to a woman who has hearing loss and dealing with TS? Well, I mean, I don't sugarcoat that my hearing was the biggest challenge when I was in college um, from the standpoint of, especially when I was in a more diverse uh, university campus, uh, a wider range of professors that some of them had accents that I wasn't used to processing. Um, it wasn't always easy, right. but I didn't let that stop me. I got a master's in engineering. Um, and so I think as far as if you have a child with, you have a daughter with TS, just make sure that you're her advocate for, you know, testing, um, you know, ear health. Don't let um, ear infections go untreated because that can lead to hearing loss, yes. you know. Keep the ears healthy, um, get testing, get accommodations when needed, like at school or whatever. Um, and as far as an adult, um, you know, you can't see them very well because of my hair. So sometimes I have to, I have to point it out to people um, and make sure they realize, you know, I am hard of hearing so they can maybe speak slower uh, or look at you know, look, make sure they're looking at me, that kind of thing. Um, it, it sometimes takes extra, you got to let people know, but um, overall my experience has been the people I've worked with and my friends, um, they're all very understanding. My family, of course, they, they're they used to... Uh, having to speak up around me. Um, right. Yeah. You, people, people get used to it. Um, the more that you're around them. And like I said, I've never really let it hinder me from doing what I wanted to do. Right. Right. No, I mean, yeah, that, that I like saying something. I'm, Grant, I'm not going to go become a flight attendant <laughs> anytime soon. Oh. I don't, my ears couldn't handle that, but, um, other than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I, I like saying something along the same lines because, um, I know a lot of girls, um, you know, I like telling girls, even when you find out, 
much less just hearing loss and TS. But, you know, when you find out you have TS, just in general, you know, the thing is, is that you're still the same person that you were five minutes before. Um, you know, don't, don't let, you know, oh, I have TS, oh, I have hearing loss. You know, don't let that, you know, don't let that get you down. You know, you can still overcome it. You know, there's, um, my grandmother used to say there's more than one way to skin a rabbit, <laughs> so to speak. And I'm sure you've heard that too, since you and I are both Southern girls. You know, there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. Um, but, you know, it's, a, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do different things that you want to do if you want to do it. Um, so Karen says, I bet, I bet I had hearing loss for years without knowing it. Um, oh, without knowing it. Uh, yeah, and just somehow accommodated. Had tinnitus as long as I can imagine. Wasn't even aware I had TS until my 30s. And then Danielle says, I still have to remind my husband to be patient with my hearing issues sometimes. Um, Karen says, my husband and I both ha have hearing loss, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, it's... Like Amy was saying, you know, um, you know, maybe point it out to people. Like maybe sometimes they don't, you know, if they don't see your hearing aids, things like that. You know, just say like, you know, ask. You can ask them politely. You know, oh hey, can you speak slower or you know, make sure that they have direct eye contact with you so that way you can see what they're saying, things like that. So that way they can be a little more accommodating. I actually read something um, in a book. It was a book about a flight attendant, and the, the, she was talking about wearing red lipstick so that people can see her their lips easier. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. hearing impaired, for yeah. hearing impaired passengers to be able to read lips better. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Have that, you heard of that? Well, yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of the flight attendants have actually. Um, I wasn't told this in training, um, but um, it's just something. I mean, I, I think with any job, you learn stuff in training, and then once you start your act, start your job, then you learn other things that, you know, people didn't even tell you. Um, so, one of the things that I was told, um, not, not that you have to wear, like, dark red lipstick, but um, they said, like, you know, like, some sort of, like, darker color. So, that way it, like, accents your lips. So, that way, yeah, because you do have... Um, you know, passengers who are hard of hearing or, you know, are deaf, things like that. And, yeah, they go by reading lips. So, if they can see your lips better, it helps a lot for people who have to read your lips. Yeah. So that first One thing I did just, did, just, did just think of is um, because of the way of speech development, um, if your daughter does have hearing loss, the earlier you address that the better right right no yeah oh yeah um oh hey debbie um cassidy says hi amy am i friends with you on facebook if not could i add you <laughs> sure yes yeah she she's gonna be tagged cassidy she i think she's already tagged in the video now um so yeah you can click on her name go send her a friend's request y'all should all friend amy if you haven't been friends with amy she's just awesome she's a cool she's just the coolest i love her to death so she's my little mamita over there in oklahoma so speaking yeah. of which i actually uh i know you heard about the southwest thing this morning i actually got called for a two-day trip so i gotta be at the airport at six in the morning <laughs> But, um, fun, fun. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I'm not going through OKC, but oh. anyway, yeah, I know I haven't been to OKC yet. I don't know why, but it's like I go everywhere but OKC. Like, what? Well, I'm on. like 15 minutes from the airport, so if you're ever there, you let me know. Oh, honey, sh trust me, you're gonna be the first phone call. Hey, Amy, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll Uber over there if I have to, sister. Um, but yeah, no, um, I'm actually going. Shoot. Oh, Jacksonville. Yeah, I think it's Philly, Jacksonville, then Denver, and then Denver. I'm doing like a three-leg day the next day. I'm trying to remember where I go. I go from like Denver to Cincinnati, I think, and then down to Philly. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a little zigzag there. Um, Debbie says, hello. And um, Trinity says, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Tulsa. How far is Tulsa from you? Uh, I'm about two hours from Tulsa. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, Charity, she's like two hours away from you, baby. So, anyway, she say, uh, Charity just said that she's in Tulsa. So, she's like two hours away from you. But anyway. She and I were in the same program back in the early 80s at NIH. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, well, anyway, ladies, Amy, thank you for so much for coming on and talking to us and sharing no your problem. experience. So, but anyway, well, ladies, we're going to wrap up ladies' night tonight um, because, like I said, I've got to wake up early in La Mañana. Mm, don't remind me. Um, but, yeah, so... We're going to go for tonight. Don't forget, tomorrow's Wednesday. Get your wrists up on Wednesday. Feet up on Friday. Show the walk for Ferial some love. That's right. That's right. Uh, show them some love. If you haven't liked the walk for Ferial page, go like the walk for Ferial page. You need to. It's awesome. Why haven't you not done it? Um, so anyway, and you can always look up information about TS on the walk for Ferial page. There's also TSGA. There's TSF. There's TSSUS. There's a whole slew of organizations out there that you can look up. And also the KCTS Diaries. Those girls are awesome. I love Andrea to death. What can I say? She's my girl. So anyway, all right, guys. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Woo.